Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were talking about the points that every single woman needs to know about male psychology, about how and what her husband wants in a relationship. Point number one was respect. Point number two, men inherently, men are created to provide. So it is ingrained in them that they're going to take care of the one whom they love. It is in the fitrah of a man that he wants to protect his wife. Men feel the need to take care of their wives and they feel useful, they feel functional when they do. And this goes back to what Allah says in the Quran that men are qawwam over women. And of the meaning of qawwam is to take care of. And we all know that our sharia obligates upon men to take care of the woman. And this is in complete harmony with the natural instinct that Allah has given us. Therefore, when men do take care of their wives and their families, they feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. Men like to be dependent on. They like to be viewed as providers and supporters. And therefore, working hard for the family is a part of being a man. The irony here is that when a woman complains that her husband is working long hours and therefore is not home to be with her, to complain, to, to pay attention to her, to, to not showing her love, the irony is that from the man's perspective, he's working long hours because he loves his wife, because he wants to provide for his family, because he wants to rise up in his work and get a better and better position. And this goes back to the languages of love. Men show their love by providing the financial support, by providing the, the, the physical needs of the family. Whereas women, by and large, don't view this as being an act of love. And therefore, women need to understand that dedicating long hours to one's work, to one's, to one's uh, sustenance, this is in fact the sign that a man loves his children, loves his wife and wants to take care of them. Another difference between the two is that by nature, men think more about the future of finances. Men think more about what's going to happen if I die, what's going to happen to my children, what's going to happen in 10 years for college, what's going to happen if this and that. Whereas by and large, women think long-term relationships. Women by and large are not that concerned about finances. For a man, he's worried about making sure that 20, 30 years down the line, he has enough savings to take care of his wife, to pay for his college education, kids' college education. A woman, on the other hand, is more interested in getting her husband's affection and making sure that he's going to love her 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Now, of course, this is not to say that a woman should just let her husband work himself to death and ignore her and not spend any time with her. However, what I'm trying to stress here, a woman must understand the frame of mind of a hard-working husband. She needs to see him for who he is. He's working hard so that he actually does something for her. And no doubt in the process he also benefits himself. But there's no denying that if he didn't have a family, if he didn't have children, he wouldn't be working that hard. Therefore, there is a very real danger when a woman continu continues to complain about the work her husband is doing, that this is going to lead to some sense of frustration, eventual anger. Why? Because the husband sees all of this work is done for the wife. Whereas the wife sees all of this work has nothing to do with her. And so there's a huge discord that will take place. The bottom line here, husbands, understand that women have a different perspective on your long hard hours at work. They see it as some type of competition between them and the office place, them and the work schedule. And so you need to understand that while work might indeed be important, family also has a place. Remember what our Prophet ﷺ said, give the rights of every person as they deserve it. Give the rights of your boss and your family and make sure that the two of them find a compatible middle. Don't sacrifice one for the other. And no doubt, there's not going to be a perfect solution. You can't make everybody happy. But do realize that your wife might have a legitimate point that sometimes you do deserve to be home. Sometimes you do need to cut back. Wives, our sisters, you need to understand that your husband's work is not a second wife. It's not a competition. There is no competition. He's working hard for you. He's working hard for your children. He's working hard in order to sustain the relationship because as a man, he's worried about money. 
And so you need to cut him some slack and realize that that hard work is for you. And each of you needs to realize that that happy middle ground can only be obtained when the both of you communicate your needs and expectations to the other. The third point that I want every single woman to realize Very simple, very simple point. Sex empowers men. Men feel powerful when they're given sexual attention. It's no secret that men are sexual creatures. Everybody knows that. Even in this course, we've been stressing this point over and over again. The number one complaint that husbands have across the globe is that their wives don't give them enough sex. And this is regardless of religion, race, ethnicity, culture. What women fail to realize most of the time is that sex is not just a biological need. Of course, it is a biological need. Women fail to realize that men's need for sex isn't just like need for food or water or sleep. They don't understand that if a husband doesn't give, uh, get sex, why he gets so cranky? Why, what's the big deal about it? The point is that sex is the key to unlocking a man's emotion. When a man is shown sexual attention, it makes him feel like a man. It makes, him, it, makes, it makes up for any other faults that a woman might have. And when a woman does not give a man sex, every fault of hers, even imaginary faults, will be discovered by the man. Sex makes a man feel loved and allows him to love back in return. If a man is given his sexual needs, the husband feels as if he's ready to take on the world. To be a man means that, means that the masculinity in a husband is manifested within his married life. Let me put this very bluntly. If his wife showers him with sexual attention and gives him great sex, this makes him feel like a full man. He gets an extra powerful energy boost. And with this energy boost, he feels that he can conquer the world. He feels that uh, the, the sense of joy and satisfaction is so powerful that he can sweep away many other worries of life, many other distresses, many other you know, work-related, society-related, and so on. Conversely, if a wife rejects her husband, if a wife does not allow a man to be a man with her, well then how is he going to be a man for the rest of the world? A wife's rejection of her husband is one of the most demoralizing factors that a man can possibly face. And it is for this reason that it is absolutely forbidden in our Sharia for a woman to say no to her husband's advances. Saying no is not just a refusal to be a wife, it's a refusal of him to be a man. Saying no is the ultimate height of disrespect that you're denying him the very essence of his manhood. And plenty of men have told me, especially after all of these classes that I've been teaching, that the most painful demoralizing factor, in fact some of the men that I have interviewed and spoken to clearly suffer from what we would call depression. The single most painful demoralizing factor in a relationship is the wife's continual rejection of her husband. Women, in contrast, seem not to realize what a great crisis this causes in their husband's life. Why? Because a man by nature bottles up his personal problems and issues. A man by nature doesn't speak about those emotional problems. And therefore, a wife many times is clueless about why their relationship seems to be going down the drain. There was one case that, that uh, I, I was involved with that uh, the husband, the wife was shocked that out of nowhere her husband divorced her. Why? Because, this is exactly the reason that, would ha that happened, because she was reading a, a novel that he didn't like her to read. A, a fiction and a novel. That he saw the book and he says, and he's just one small thing led to another, anger came and the next thing you know, he, she was divorced. And the, uh, the, the couple called me up and the wife was all confused. You know, I don't understand, this came out of the blue. And then when I spoke to the husband, Privately, the first question, point blank, I asked him, how is your sexual relationship with your wife? And the husband just froze because he was not expecting this question. The husband just froze, began to fluster. And then he 
almost broke down in tears and he confided with me that it was the source of the greatest tension, that it was because of that sexual frustration and tension that he was finding things to, 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 to get irritated about. You know, 90% of the time, when the husband is constantly picking on the wife, it's because of a sexual frustration. And I have been told by dozens of husbands that if there is a good connection in sex, every other fault of the wife is ignored. Bad food, late laundry, dirty house, everything is ignored. Conversely, if the sex is not good, then every fault of the wife becomes 10 or 100 times bigger than it actually is. In fact, faults will be invented when they don't actually exist. Therefore, sisters realize that men's need for sex isn't just a biological need, it's a psychological need. And never in any circumstance, and this we believe as Muslims, but wallahi, even if you're not a Muslim, this is what modern psychologists are saying, that women should never refuse the advances of their husband because saying no to your husband is to tell him point blank, you're not a man for me. You're not worthy of being a man for me. And if he can't be a man for you, how can he be a man for the rest of the world? We'll take our next break here and then come back and finish up what are the main points that a woman needs to know about a man.